Good afternoon. Welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Today is the third Sunday of Lent, and the readings may be found in your red worship, 1033. That's 1033. Please join in our opening hymn found again in the red worship, 465, The Cross of Jesus. That's 465. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? 
So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand, as you go, the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm may be found in your Blue Gather, page 82, if today you hear God's voice. That's 8-2. Thank you. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The disciples, the disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, 
Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your, you people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. We're given this incredible gospel today on this third Sunday of Lent. And needless to say, it's a little longer gospel. We even, even in the gospel we read today, it's meant to be so much longer. There's a lot happening in it. And it's worth reading through a few times if, if you have time later on this week. I want to zero in on just a few aspects of the gospel, just to, to, to give, a, give this a little bit of a focus. Part of what's happening here, and I just want to, I want to go deeper into this reality. Jesus here, this is going to sound scandalous, so hold on until I get to the end. Jesus here is looking for a bride when he is here at coming to, the, to this well. And there are so many signs that point in that direction. That he's looking for a bride. Symbolized here in this Samaritan woman. Of course, he's not marrying her. That's not, that's not the point. But, he, but what's being revealed here is he is looking to be in union with someone. And of course, ultimately, that someone is the church. That is us, actually, to be in union fully with us in that way. And the symbolism here is all over the place. So here, Jesus, he comes to a well. And every Jew who was hearing that would have, would have remembered so many of the Old Testament patriarchs who met their wives at a well. Jacob and, and Israel, this is Jacob's well. Jacob and Rachel, Jacob who became Israel, met Rachel there at the well. Moses met his wife, Zipporah, at a well. Abraham met his wife at a well. So this, this, every Jew seeing that here's a well, there is a meeting, a very important meeting between a man and a woman. And there's going to be a wedding 
very, very soon. That's what's being spoken here. And then even the significance of speaking here about uh, giving a drink, it was the same kind of a conversation took place with, with Rachel. She asked for a drink, and that was the sign that Jacob was to marry her. So that all of this symbolism here, that there is going to be a wedding, and it's coming soon, okay? And of course, in the conversation here, Jesus is speaking about this living water that will well up within. He's describing what the wedding is going to look like, what the unification is going to be. Jesus, who desires to enter into every one of us, to fill us all the way that we would have all of his life actually living in us. That's what it means when we say that Jesus has come to marry his church in a, in a beautiful way, to marry each one of us. It's not marriage in, in a human sense, but it's that unification that he actually desires to be one with us. And so, so what, is this, what is this living water that he's talking about? How do we access it? Where is it? And of course, the, and even in the story that's revealed here, he's speaking about his thirst. You know, give, he, he speaks to this woman, give me a drink. And there's only one other time in the gospel when Jesus refers again to his thirst. And that's on that great day when he gave his life for all of us as he was on the cross, giving his body over. There's that, that marital union that he's giving to us. And there he speaks about his thirst. I thirst, he says, on the cross. And what's he thirsting for? Of course, there's a twofold meaning. He's thirsty because he's losing all of this bodily fluid. But he is also thirsty for us, so deeply thirsty for union with us. As he looks at us, I, I, I want you. In this, we, we look at Jesus and we see this eternal thirst that he has for us and for our souls. And we're meant, we're meant to look at that and to, to receive his desire for us, how he longs to be one with us. It's impo so important for us to be caught up in that gaze of how deeply he longs for us. Because there's so much, you know, that our, our sin, our weakness, that sometimes hinders us. And I hear, I, I experience it in my own life and I hear from others. It's this constant question, does God really desire me? Does God, you know, I've done all of this or there are all these issues in my life. And it's from the cross that we see, even as in a way, you know, we're responsible for Jesus on the cross. Even there, he looks at us, at every one of us, even in our weaknesses. Yeah, I, I want you right now. I want to be in union with you. And of course, it's from there that we see the beginning of the living water released for all of us. It's his life. And that, of course, happened when that soldier pierced his side. And from there flowed out water and blood. And uh, you know, there's so, many, so much symbolism for the Jews that the symbol of, of blood and water coming out of a, a being, it's the sign of their life. So Jesus here is releasing his life for all of us. And that is the, the eternal springs. And it, of course, it, our, our deep belief as Catholics, whenever we are baptized, we're receiving that water that came out of Jesus' own side. That's why it, it is eternal. It's still flowing today. Everyone who is baptized is tasting that water again, having that water wash over them. They're receiving the Lord's life, his very life being poured out for them. And they're being washed in his blood. That's the mystery of the truth of, of, that, of, that, of that reality of baptism. And of course, even today, as we come forward for the Eucharist, we are drinking, eating and drinking from that side. His life that has been handed over for us 
given to us to eat. It's, it's his eternal, uh, he, that it is the eternal banquet of, of his body and blood. It's those, that eternal spring that he's speaking about in our gospel today for us to receive constantly, constantly. And then finally, of course, it also unleashes in us that eternal spring, which is the Holy Spirit really living in us. It came to birth in us, and the gift of our baptism is nourished in us every time we come to participate in Jesus' body and blood in the Eucharist. But it is the love of God that is living in us. And we're meant to know that and to unleash that truth for us. We've already been given it. We, we are in union with Jesus. But we're meant to unleash it even more deeply. And, and, and we see that, of course, beautifully displayed in the life of the, of the saints. St. Paul says, kind of puts words to it in this way. He says, now it's no longer I who live, but it is Christ who is living in me. That's Paul's way of speaking about the marital relationship with Jesus. It's speaking about his union with him. And what we see in Paul is all of this strength. You know, he, he went, he suffered greatly. He, he completely turned his life away from all sin. He was living Jesus' life. And when we look at the lives of the saints, you know, I think every one of us says, how did they do that? Whatever it was that they were living, the, the incredible amount of love that they lived, the, the forgiveness that they did, or the, the great fasting that they did. It was through the power of Jesus. It was Jesus living in them. And so for us during this season of Lent, we're meant to be, to touch that again, to remember that Jesus is living in us. We have, we have been brought, in, brought into union with him. And often I'll hear, and of course, think another, this is another one of the things, those things that I experience very much. But we'll say things like, you know, I, I can't stop sinning in this way. And there's something beautiful about admitting it, admitting our weakness there. And there's a truth to it because we, we come up against our weakness. But for us as Christians, we who have been wedded to Jesus already, there, there's something powerful to say that where, where we cannot, Jesus can take over. Jesus on the cross died completely to, to sin. And so where we struggle with sin, we can say, Jesus, you live here. You help me to die more deeply to this area of sin in my life. Or maybe in this particular area, I, I, I can't forgive this person for what they've done to me. And we all know the, the cruelness that we experience in the world. And sometimes it's so hard, a place where we cannot do it. But we have been wedded to Jesus. He already, and he wants to be unleashed in us. So Jesus, where I cannot forgive, Jesus, you forgive in me. I forgive Jesus, this person who did this to me. And they made me feel like this. You unleash your power in me, your forgiveness in me. Or, there, or maybe there's a certain area where it's so difficult to love. I can't love in this situation. Jesus, I need you to love here. That's the marriage that Jesus desires to live in us. That he so longs, it's his thirst. Let me live that way. Give yourself to me so that I might give myself even more deeply to you and live all the way through you. It's a beautiful, a marvelous marriage that he really wants to live. It, it sounds like symbolic language, but it is real. And we're experiencing it so profoundly today in, the, in this gift of the Eucharist where literally he is giving us his life in the gift it, that, that is flowing from his heart. He's giving us himself today. 
So this week, I, just, just for our way of, of continuing to live into this this, this week, just think, what, where, where are those ways where it feels like it's difficult to live our Christian lives? And just remember, in all of those areas, Jesus wants to live his life. It's his work. He wants to be married more deeply to us. And so we ask for his help in that way. Let's stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, let us turn to him with our needs. For the church, that the women at the well may be a model for us, leading us to testify to Jesus as the source of living water, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders around the world may ensure that our precious resource of water is well cared for and to ensure that all people have sufficient clean water, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing for the Easter sacraments, especially our candidates, Marcia, Julian, Lucas and Thomas, that they might always find in the Lord the words of everlasting life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer the lack of any basic necessity, that they may receive the resources they justly deserve as children of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have hardened their hearts, that they may realize the love of God that has been poured out into all of our hearts through the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our parish, for those who are sick or homebound, for those who have died, and for Alice Stifter, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion and generosity, when we struggle in the deserts of our new life, you quench our thirst with living water. May that water overflow in enabling us to share it with all those in need. Hear this and all the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. As the gifts are being prepared, please join in singing out of your red worship, 674, we walk by faith. That's 674.
we walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear from him who spoke as none has spoke, but we believe him here. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod, but it is promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord. As may our faith abound To call on you when you are near And seek where you are found That when our life of faith is done In realms of clearer light We may behold you as you are Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As we approach Chad's table, please join in singing out of your Blue Gather 349, Come to the Water. That's 349. Let us pray. Let 
as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high. We humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our announcements for the week. Just a general dispensation has been granted by Archbishop Hebda from the obligation of abstinence from meat on Friday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. The Archbishop recommends that all consider replacing it with another penitential act if we do partake in meat that day. Just a reminder that we have Stations of the Cross every Friday during Lent at 7 p.m. It's a beautiful way of entering into this uh, parish retreat that we that whole church-wide retreat that we are all on. Our Lenten Reconciliation Penance, penance Service will be on Thursday, March 30th at 7 p.m. And again, as always, we invite the kindest priests of the Archdiocese to be with us that night. So and it's a great experience for everyone to, to, to hand our sins over to the Lord. Lenten almsgiving opportunities are in the bulletin, including a laundry soap drive for the homeless of Hennepin County, ICA food shelf and Easter baskets for Mary's Place and donations for the Easter egg hunt. There's more details in the, bu in the bulletin. Our Lenten even songs continue to take place each Tuesday during Lent at 5 p.m. and it's both here in church and live stream. And again, if you have not already made plans to watch our middle school play, Once Upon a Mattress, there is still time, and you can visit the Notre Dame Academy website for more information. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. As we ready ourselves to go, please join in singing out of your blue gather, 352, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. That's 352. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God sent the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the of God, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God.